Hey everybody, it's Fanchon and we are still here at the Essence Film Festival. We're so excited bringing you all of this amazing content, bringing you all of these black women and gender expansive people who are showing their films here or here to support. And now we are here with Adatoro Makende. We're so glad to meet you in person. Yes, thank you for having me. Although, you know what, I shouldn't say that because we met at the Hollywood Bowl just a couple weeks ago. Yes. Our friend Erica Green was like, you need to know each other. Yes, and I'm so grateful that she made that introduction. <laughs> Keep an eye out for collaborations in the future. I feel like that is a high potential for happening. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> so, Editorial, tell us what you do and what are you doing here at Essence? Well, I am a writer, uh, director, producer, uh, and I am here because my screenplay, The American Can, is an honorable mention screenplay here yes. at the festival. Tell us a little bit about the screenplay. Um, well, The American Can is a Hurricane Katrina biopic, and I'm going to do a little cheat here because after a couple of days and brain fog, I want to make sure I get the log line <laughs> this right. This just so shows you how much fun we have here <laughs> at Essence, that by this day, you know, the voice is a little sexy, yeah. the brain a little fogged, mm -hmm. you know, that's just what happens uh -huh. here. Yes. I want to get this right so you understand the impact of this story without me trying to think through a couple of days Thank of Essence you. in my head. Yes. Um, the American Can is based on actual events in the chaotic aftermath of Hurricane Katrina, a recall Marine veteran John Keller navigates haunted memories serving in Iraq while risking his life for the safety and rescue of over 200 people trapped in his building during one of the greatest natural disasters in American history. So that's the that's the log line of it all. But Jen in general, it's a gentleman, African American, recon Marine veteran, and he was stuck in his building here so in this New is Orleans. Based on, on that true story. Based on a true story, and um, here in New Orleans, mid city, and um, he just he he had to take over. Um, he he was somebody who realized that, you know, was coming back from Iraq, never got deprogrammed, came back with PTSD, and he just wanted to be left alone, you know, just kind of live life, and he's misunderstood by his government, by his family, whoever, and then the storm comes, and like he tells me to this day, you know, Katrina was kind of like my Iraq, you know, I kind of needed it to kind of like waken up again, because he didn't want to engage, he didn't want the... He, he wanted, he knows that he was built to be a soldier, but at the same time, if somebody died on his watch, he still blames himself. He comes back home with survivor's remorse, you know what I mean? So anyway, this is a story that is dear to my heart. It's been in the works for, well, let's put it this way. Next year is the 20 year anniversary of Hurricane Katrina. Oh and to this day, there's not been one narrative feature film made on Hurricane Katrina like this. So this has been in my life for 19 years. <laughs> Beautiful. So yeah, we want to talk about kind of pragmatics. How do you actually get your project made? So now that you have this feature screenplay, and obviously one of the reasons you're doing it here is hopefully an executive will hear it and call you and say, how much money do you need? <laughs> um, but otherwise, what in terms of financials, once you have a, a, a project that's the script is written, what would you do next in terms of financials? Well, this is a very unique situation. Um, I mean, the normal step in, when you have a screenplay, yes, you want to find, if you don't have a producer, if you're just a writer, or even just a writer-director for that matter, you want a producer, you want someone who's going to champion the project all the way through, um, be your collaborator, not just in creative content, but in, and also to you know raise funding for it and to, to package it in a way that just makes it accessible. Um, with this particular project with mine, I did go through the Hollywood route for quite a while, actually, um, and I was very successful. It was, I mean, it's all in the trade so you'll see Sony and you'll see Will Smith attached and I had major major players it's been a high profile project for quite a while but um, in 2019 I made the decision to do it independently and by independent doesn't some people think independent means cheap and you know not as good I'm like no it's still a great amazing film the difference being is that you have a little bit more creative control in how it is executed so for me personally after so many years of being in that sort of Hollywood track I decided you know if I'm going to get this film made I think I have to take a little bit more creative license and just autonomy in terms of how to get it. and as I always say I'm building my village one angel at a time so right now I'm building my angel and I have amazing angels involved um, with regards to on the creative side and talent. Um, and so, yes, I'm now at the, the financing stage. So financing for me can be, and for most uh, filmmakers, is in terms of going to the independent route. Actually, even during the studio route, is find individuals who are aligned, who are like-minded, who want to see not just a movie get made and make money at the box office, but really... Your story. Exactly, but want to see the story made and want to... And, and, and I, I believe as the uh, other gentleman who's here, you know, speaking purpose... You know, you have to have purpose. I mean, there are a lot of movies that get green light, greenlit and 
you know, sometimes we're wondering, how do they, <laughs> how do they can make that movie? How do they get money for that? I don't know. We'll never know. Somebody knows somebody, and someone said, yeah, mm-hmm. let's make it. Mm-hmm. Um, but Often are, they don't look like us. Right. Many times they don't look like us, right? That the yep, but for some reason they end up getting that money. Exactly. So what about when when we are telling stories about us? Yeah. And I think I think that that private investor. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm like you, yeah, good. Yeah, right, so, that you know, private teamwork. investor route is is an important way to go if you want to maintain the story that you want to tell. Absolutely. Okay, so we we will first of all we got to have you on just for a full <laughs> guest episode. Um, my last question is this segment we have called Let's Talk Tech. Mm-hmm. So I wonder if there's a piece of terminology, a concept, something that you can share that if you're not a filmmaker, you wouldn't know that particular term, but it's an important term to know as a filmmaker. As a filmmaker. Um, now, this is interesting because it's not so much a tech thing, but as a filmmaker, you should know it. So I'm going to, you know, I'm just going to throw a word out there, which is E&O. Right. Tell us what it is. Yes. Errors and omission. <laughs> yes. It's actually insurance coverage, and it protects you <laughs> in case you have made an error or an omission in your choices. So, and what that means is because so a lot of times people think, well, if I have a camera, I can just pick up the camera and go shoot. Okay, that's great. But what is that? What is that camera capturing? If you capture a can of coke and you have not cleared that can of coke, or if you take a song because you're like, oh, we're just gonna sing this song as we're shooting. Okay, simple enough. But have you cleared that song, yes. right? And so, because you might later on find yourself having to not have enough money to clear it, or you've, you've used a word or something you just, you know, you just kind of took for granted. And because you don't have error in emissions, you know, usually when you have your emissions, they will check your script to say, uh, this, this, and this. They're going to flag things for you in advance because you don't want to take the time, shoot something, and then realize you can't use it and or be sued because of it. Right. So, you know, you'll see something that's like, you know, and it's like, what is it, you know? errors and omission. <laughs> and thank you because it's so important to remember that for uh, include that line item in your budget. In right? your budget. A lot of times yeah. people are like, oh, you don't think about insurance and then you find out how much it's going to cost. So make sure that's in there. Yeah. Auditoro, thank you so much for joining us. We have a swag bag for you. Oh. This is full of black owned uh, company products. Yay. So please utilize them. I sh- carry your sister brunch bag around proudly and we hope to have you back on the podcast i would love to come back i would love to come back thank you so much i'm gonna enjoy my swag bag (laughs) hi this is ade tura makinde and i am here at the essence film festival 2024 and you are listening to sister brunch